pixelart.com uh, we're doing animated gifs in either of those programs you choose which one you want to use i offer both if pixel art is is easier for you go there if you want to keep practicing your photoshop skills dope let's play in that space okay so let's start with photoshop so in photoshop you're going to do a small document it's 64 pixels high by 64 pixels wide and it's going to be composed of at least three but no more than eight images. You can see mine right now, my animation that loops is six images. You can see that each image lasts on the screen for 0.1 seconds in each frame here. So this is the timeline, which you open with window timeline, just as a reminder, the timeline for the frame animation that is here, uh, each frame corresponds with the layer. And you can see when I click on the frames, which layer it corresponds with when it has the visible eye icon next to it, right? Uh, I renamed these for, for, for me so that I could understand it. I highly recommend you do that too. And you can also see that in each layer, the background is visible. You can toggle that off if you want, but you'd have to do it for each layer, okay? So I also point this out too that when you're, whatever you're editing a layer, after you have them, say you've already created all your frames and you want to edit a frame, you have to do it by the layer. And it's just easier to select the layer um, as opposed to hoping that, so right now six is visible, but I want to mess with five. Um, you see, it'll go to the one that's visible. So just, just keep that in mind. Um, I hit space bar to play the animation. And I want to point down right here, this little uh, key stroke indicator that I have for y'all. So that is the space bar sign. That is command. Obviously, it'll highlight like that. Option slash alt is right there. Control is that. Probably won't use it. And shift is right there. So let's say if I did something like um, command O to open, you would see it there. It's pretty brief, but you're in a video, so you can scrub back and forth to see whatever you need to see. So let's go over how to do this really quickly. I'm not going to do the whole baby, but I'll show you how to set up um, uh, a frame animation in Photoshop. So spacebar to stop the animation, spacebar to stop, start it, just so you know. Okay, command N will open up a new document. We want it to be pixels for sure, right? 64, I'm going to hit tab to go to the height by 64. Great, tab, resolution. You want to make sure it's 72. Great, RGB color, lovely create. Boom. Here we go. Really small. Remember our navigation for zooming in and out, which is command. It'll say equals down there, but command plus if that helps you remember and command minus to zoom out. So zoom in, zoom out. Um, first things first, let's just do this before we forget. We're going to create a new layer. This is where we're going to draw. Right now our background is white and we have sort of a, an open layer. Right, you know that gray and white grid just means it's a uh, it's it's see through, right? It's transparent. Um, that's great. We probably don't want a background, like say for my baby, for example. Um, when I export this, I want the baby just to float um, over top of a background. If you think about the Popeye animation and the the cells, the clear paper um, that they did the paintings on, we essentially want this to be clear paper when we import it to other things um, and layer it with other things in a collage technique. So just keep that in mind. So leave the background layer and leave your transparent layers that you're working on for right now. In order to visualize what we're about to create in each of these layers that will then translate into frames, uh, it's good to see the grid system, the grid pixel system underneath. So to toggle that on, go to view, show, grid, which is command apostrophe for a shortcut. And right now you can see it's a one pixel, one pixel. Um, so each of my squares is a pixel high by a pixel wide. 
so that the entire composition area is 64 by 64. That's great. Yours probably will not look like that. So in order to set that up, Photoshop, Preferences, go to Guides, Grids, and Slices. And then right here where it says Grid, that's where you want to play. So you can make this any color you want, but I'm going to do light gray, and I kind of recommend that too. Um, it's sort of uh, less obtrusive as you're creating your image. Pixel, this is important. Set it to one pixel. Set the subdivisions to one. It might be default zero, but you just need one. So you just want to see one pixel by one pixel. Each of those squ squares is one pixel by one pixel. And you can hit OK. And now we're going to start drawing. The tool that we want to use is the pencil tool. Not the brush tool, but the pencil tool, which can have um, hard edges, or essentially edges that conform to the array of pixels, the one pixel by one pixel grid, um, as opposed to the brush tool, which, which has this kind of um, uh, softening effect or like blurred effect in a way. So pencil tool is right here. It might have the brush tool by default, but if you click on the brush tool and hold, you can get to the pencil tool. And you saw that once your pencil tool is selected, B is your uh, keyboard shortcut to access it. You want to come up here, pencil, great. You want to make sure this is set at least to start to one pixel. Hardness, 100%. Normal for the mode is fine. And just make sure your opacity is 100. We might, you know, I don't know why it wouldn't be, but just in case. And then let's set up your eraser tool. So that would be E uh, as the keyboard shortcut. But there are also some other options. So if eraser tool doesn't pop up, click and hold this, select the eraser tool, great. Um, there it is. You want to make sure it is size zero to start. And the more really important thing is the mode to be set to pencil. Sometimes it's set to brush, and that has a different way of racing. We want pencils that will erase one pixel at a time if your size is set to one pixel. Opacity 100%. Great. So we're essentially ready to go. Um, we're just going to start with drawing just like a, a black ball that drops. Um, so Open using the uh, the bracket, open bracket, or sorry, the close bracket, I can make something bigger. And, oops, sorry, that was the eraser tool. With the pencil tool, I can make it bigger, right? And that's layer one. Now what I'm going to do is duplicate my layer. So what I could do is do Command J for the shortcut. Or I'm going to do Command Z, or I could do an option, right? Option down there, click and drag up. Do you see that little bar, the little uh, blue bar highlight? And then you have layer two, um, a duplicate of layer one. So layer one, copy. And then I can hit V for my selection tool. And I'm just going to nudge this thing down a little bit because it's going to fall. I'm going to make it till it touches the ground, right? So you can already see what's going to happen. All right. Then with that one, I'll make that invisible. I don't need to see it now. Uh, I'm going to do Command J again. Duplicate the second layer. Make this one invisible because I know it's there. And what's going to happen with still V, my selection tool selected? I'm going to move it down here. And I am thinking that my ball is going to kind of flatten out when it hits the ground. So I hit B for my pencil tool. It's kind of like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, God. Awesome. I'm going to hit Command J to duplicate that layer, make this one invisible. Now I'm V, and I can, let's make the whole thing just go down. And I'm hitting Shift to keep it uh, on the same axis. B, and it's just like really squishing out here. Great. Sort of crazy. Okay. Um, and then what I'm going to do, so that's one, two, three, four. I'm just going to copy, essentially go in the reverse. Um, this is a really rudimentary animation, but just to show you. So holding down option, I'm going to click and drag this one above it. And then I come here, right? I'm going in reverse, but I have to build up on top of this layer. 
I'm going to click and drag layer one copy and put that above that. So now it'll go down. So middle, down, down, squish, and then build back up. And then this will come back to this layer one. So now let's turn this into an animation. So you can go into all of these, toggle the visibility, edit them as you want. Um, but let's look at how you turn this into a, a frame animation really quickly. So window, timeline, frame animation. If it doesn't say frame animation, click there. You want it to make sure it is frame animation. Then you select this box. Awesome. So you can see it's only showing the one that's visible. Click on this little hamburger thing right here, this little icon, and then make frames from layers. And you can see what happened, right? We picked up a rogue background there. What you, if you want to do, um, we can erase that. So I can hit erase. And it doesn't, uh, doesn't include it. So great, you're done with that. Um, now to animate these, select all of them. Click right here, this little down arrow. Let's do 0.1 seconds to start. And then I can just hit play. Which is spacebar. Okay, so that's a really rudimentary way to make a animated, um, animated GIF in Photoshop. Uh, you have six discrete images, but then when played in sequence, they create this illusion of motion. Freaking magic. Dope. Uh, Spacebar to stop. I just want to show you how you export that. So file, export, save for web legacy. Look how teeny it is, right? So 64 by 64 pixels is fine. You could just do that. But if you want to make it bigger, say 500 pixels by 500 pixels, which isn't even that big, you want to definitely make sure you change it to nearest neighbor. Yeah, it'll maintain its sort of pixelated look. Make sure it's set to 500, um, set to forever, pardon me. And then you hit save, not done. You can save your GIF, gif.gif. Then I can pull it up right there. Subtle. Um, that is awesome because it's the, the transparent background as a reminder. So that's why it looks like that. Um, okay. Does that all make sense? Great. Let me look at pixel art with you really quick. Start drawing. So it's a very similar thing. Um, to Photoshop, except it's just designed to handle this 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 type of raster image pixel art drawing. Uh, yours will probably pop up um, automatically, but mine, I've used it before. So we want to make sure it's 64 by 64, right? New drawing. Clear the entire drawing. Okay. So the only thing here is you'll have ads pop up. But it's, it's all the same stuff essentially going on in Photoshop, but it's just simplified for this, this online interface because it's just going to do one thing. <coughs> so you have your brush tool. Let's see. That does not work. So you can't hit the brackets to make it bigger. You can draw. And then if you want to have it be bigger, tool, shit, options options okay um, and command z is not going to work so you have to hit oh control z gotcha so the keyboard command would be control z or you hit these this undo button so let's say i want to make the pixel size is 10 can i change the look of the brush so that it's a circle no okay so that's good to know um, when you all are doing this one um, but let's still play with that same idea that we're doing before okay so click I have my 16 pixel by 16 pixel 
square on my 64 by 64 grid. To create a frame animation within pixel art, you add a frame. Okay? This is pretty cool because it has uh, onion skinning. So onion skinning is there's uh, applies a transparency, uh, like a sort of 20% transparent ghost of your first frame in your second frame so that you can see where you want to put your um, your next object to create this, this sense of motion. So I want to go down. So I'll go here to see what's happening. Add a frame, right, going down. Add a frame. Down. Add a frame. This one I'm just going to really simply just go back up. Get rid of that add. Add a frame. Back up. All right. Let's see what happens. So you can hit preview. Cool. So if you watch the TED Ed video about time and motion, you can do a much better job of, of uh, emulating what a ball would bounce like or whatever object you're thinking about. Um, this is a fairly rigid type of motion where I would add, you know, the ease in and the ease out to this. But this gives you a sense of how you use this program to create an animation. And then what you're going to do is download it. You want to download it as a GIF. The size here, you can size it up if you want. So you can do 512 by 512 and download that jam. And it'll go to your download folders um, in your, your web browser. Okay, so I hope that helps. Um, I'm going to share with you another tutorial um, that has more detail about making the animated pixel art. It's a person jumping up and down. So that might be really great to see too. But I just want to give you a quick, a quick overview of um, how you use these two different programs to make your, your animated sprite. Okay? Good luck, y'all. Email me with questions. Hang in there. You are my heroes. Peace out. Talk to you next time.